वेलकम बैक टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द ट्यूटोरियल दैट आई स्टार्टेड इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट दैट वॉज ऑन आइडेंटिटी इन एस पी डॉट नेट कोड टू पॉइंट टू सो इफ यू हैवन गॉन थ्रू दैट लेक्चर प्लीज गो थ्रू दैट वन बिफोर कमिंग टू दिस पार्ट बिकॉज दिस पार्ट इज एंटायरली बेस्ड अपॉन द कोड ऑलरेडी रिटर्न ऑन द लास्ट पार्ट सो इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल वी शेल inspect in detail the code added in the configure services method in the last lecture in the startup class and the code to be inspected include the services.addb context and we will also inspect service.add default identity and services.configure method and services.configure application cookie methods right so getting back to the code here that was the this was the code and uh, we have uh, written uh, we have copied some code from the original microsoft documentation we ran out of time so we stopped coming with the promise that you know i will cover all the you know explanation in the configure service method the so configure services method in the startup class which is of essence that how each of these um, um options dot passwords dot required digit etc true where does it come from really you know what is the context you know how it is generating what is the origin of these um code so let's inspect this one first uh, i have explained this part so this part is services dot add db context and it sends a application db context with an options parameter and options dot use sql server which gets a parameter configuration dot get connection string default connection so what happens in this part of the code block is that you know uh, this the services is the this services is the constructor okay it is added to the configure services method to the dependency injection so if you haven't gone through the dependency injection tutorial in my uh, series of tutorials on concept building the link will be there in the video description please go through the tutorial on dependency injection before coming and after covering the first part of this lecture please come to this part then only it will make sense so i strongly re recommend you to do that so here if you have gone through those tutorials you will appreciate that you know this add db context when it operates on the services object which is added with dependency injection in the configure services method it registers the application db context as a service when using di and options is a db this options you can see on the mouse over it is a db context options builder and use sql server is also an extension method as you can see on the intellisense so use sql server it configures the context to connect to the database right and um, extension method what are extension methods just in case if you need some um, definition of extension methods i will add a few words like extension methods enable you to add methods to existing types without creating a new derived class or type recompiling or otherwise modifying the original type so i will put another resource microsoft resource on extension method please go through it to brace yourself with what an extension method is because basically in all these chunks of code the extension methods are liberally used right and then let's come to this part services dot add default identity with an identity user object passed to it dot add default ui so this is an extension method it's also another extension method and this one add entity framework stores is also an a third extension method so all of these are extension method types right so what this block of code three lines of code do it adds a set of common identity services to the application including a default 
user interface, token providers and configures authentication to use identity cookies. And it also adds a default self-contained UI for identity to the application using Razor Pages in an area named Identity with Bootstrap 4 for CSS styling. So Bootstrap 4 is, you know, this is the UI framework dot bootstrap. There is an enum. So it has got a value of one and these are two values available bootstrap four or bootstrap three. If you look into this dot bootstrap three or bootstrap four. Okay. And then this last piece of uh, code or last line, it adds an entity framework implementation of identity information service. So that's about this, these two blocks. Now coming to this part, services.configure identity option. Now let's see the definition of identity options. Identity options, it represents all the options you can use to configure the identity systems. Whereas this parameter, which is options, this is of identity options type. Okay. So Let's see, this is of identity options type on which password options, there's another class, this password method returns an object of passwords options identity. So if you go to this um, definition of identity options, so it has got password options. So public password options, password, so password is a Gets it, it is a public property which returns a type password options. So if you look into the definition of password options, it has got these uh, public properties. So best way to look into this is keep this also open side by side in a, another vertical tab group. And you can see now easily options dot password dot required digit. So required digit comes from here it's a boolean it's set to be true and options dot password dot required lowercase it's another boolean it's true and options dot password dot require non numeric that comes from this property that's also returning a boolean equals true there's another uh, boolean required uppercase it comes from here it's true and options dot password dot required length it gives a integer it returns an integer which is set to 6 required length is of 6 and options dot password dot required unique chars equals 1 that also returns an integer and it is set to a value 1 so if you set the value to different um, numbers it will get a required length of password to be 7 8 9 whatever you want and if you put the required unique character to 2 it will require two unique characters Right, and then we are uh, done with this part. We have, and now let's analyze this part. This part is also, it's giving uh, the type on the options is still identity options class. And this lockout method is of, it's returning a lockout options. Okay, so if you look into the identity options class again, go to the definitions now this lockout option let's peep into lockout options okay go, uh, go to the definition so this has got allowed for new users which returns a bool and then again if you put this in a new horizontal tabs to place it side by side new um, uh, vertical tab group then get rid of this close this one you no more need this one and then just widen it a bit and then you can see that options dot lockout dot default time span which is of an integer equals time span dot from minutes five okay so it gives you a time span it re returns a time span that returns a specified number of minutes where the application is accurate to the nearest milliseconds okay and then this is the maximum failed access attempts equals file it 
returns a integer and options dot lockout dot allowed for new users allowed for new users that's re returning a boolean and it is set to true so done with this part also and then options dot user dot allowed username characters where does it come from probably you have already guessed it um, so this is again returning identity options dot user now this is user options so let's get back to our origin that was here identity option and go to the definition so here it is user option and right click and go to definition so you have got user option these are two public properties and if you look into you just close this program class and let's put it again in a new vertical tab group okay so options dot user dot allowed user name characters so this is returning a string now this is set to the entire you know vocabulary of uh, um, alphabets and then options dot user dot required unique email so that's a bool that is returning a bool from here user options so it is set to false okay so hope it all makes sense so far and then this part is coming from services dot configure application cookie if you look into the intellisense or mouse over it is returning a i service collection object okay and here the options is cookie authentication options so cookie authentication options so let's look into the definition of this go to the definition and where is now this is highlighted already configure application cookie which is another method which is static method uh, returning an i service collection and here of interest to us is cookie authentication options so if you look into the definition of this go to definition and then keep this again um, keeping this startup class in a new vertical tab group that makes life much easier for us so why because you know you have got this options which is returning a type uh, cookie authentication options so options here dot cookies so you can say option dot cookie this part is options dot cookie and cookie and then this is returning a cookie builder object so if you go to the definition of cookie builder object you will see that you have got http only which is nothing but it is returning a boolean public virtual bool http only okay so it is returning a virtual uh, public property and it is set to true that's a, because it is boolean and options dot expire time span so what is that expire time span it's a nullable ex options dot expire time span that was actually that is cookie authentication options and it is if you go back again so cookie authentication options and we have got expire time span so this is expire time span property so it is returning a time span object right so time span that's how it is set for time span dot from minutes five and what it is doing actually if you look into the intellisense it controls how much time the authentication ticket stored in the cookie will remain valid from the point it is created the expiration information is you stored in the protected cookie ticket because of that an expired cookie will be ignored even if it is passed to the server after the browser should have purged it all right and then these three lines options dot login path now this login path it is returning a um, type string pa path string okay so this is also another public property 
it is returning path string element so um, if you look into this object again go to definition and come here so on this cookie authentication options i need this cookie auth authentication options cookie authentication options let me close this one so i already have this cookie authentication options okay and this is login path so which is returning a path string and what is this path string you go to the definition so path string is a public struct is a struct it derives from i equitable path string and in this path it takes a public constructor path string which gets a string okay a value string it gets a string so basically what when you set this left hand like that options dot login and the right hand side it is expecting a string and similarly options dot access denied path is also accept um, expecting a string so here you can see login path this is path string so access denied path it's cookie authentication options and this is path string so access denied path let's see cookie authentication options one second once more let's get it cookie authentication options go to the definition and path string is access denied path so access denied path if you go to the definition this will be here this path string again it is getting a path string object which is nothing but it's accepting a string okay so that's also set to this particular value identity slash account slash access denied the basically if you look into the um, intellisense login path it gives the login path property is used by the handler for the redirection target when handling challenge async the current url which is added to the login path as a query string parameter named by the return url parameter once a request to the login path grants a new sign in identity the return url parameter value is used to redirect the browser back to the original request an access denied path is the access denied path properties used by the handler for the redirection target when handling forbid async and options dot sliding expiration is true okay so that is on this class cookie authentication option class uh, sliding expiration sliding expiration here yeah, this one this is a boolean again okay so go back to startup so it is set to true so and then finally that's all taken care of and then services dot add mvc add mvc is an extension method adds mvc service to the specified i service collection okay so add services dot add mvc dot set compatibility version sets the compatibility version for asp.net core mvc for the application so that's about all for the you know um, configure services method which is getting called by the runtime so today as a recap what we have seen is that we have actually made a thorough analysis post mortem of the code that we have pasted from microsoft documentation the link of which is in the video description and we have gone through each of the blocks of the code and explained the meaning and the origin of the those code okay thank you